Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today we have a hydraulics hydrology problem, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about some runoff analysis. So if you're taking the FE, um, it's good to watch this. It's good to understand it, but I wouldn't expect it on your exam. But uh, for the PE, definitely need to pay attention to this. They want you to understand the relationship between uh, flow rate, time, uh, volume, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just a good practice problem for you to watch and understand the relationship there. So here's what the question says. An overland flow hydrograph for a watershed is shown below. Uh, calculate approximately how much volume or how much runoff volume rather should be anticipated. Consider any negative flow rate in the hydrograph to be zero. All right. And then we see our chart. We see our four options available to us in cubic feet. So let's add that to our tool belt here. So uh, if we're looking for some reading material, what I searched was hydrograph in the PE reference handbook. I searched for hydrograph. It's the magic word for this one. We need to make sure we're looking in the latest and greatest version, 1.2. Uh, at the time of this video, it's 1.2. And this good stuff, the goodies start on page 400. So I encourage you to just read through that whole section, honestly, just to understand that whole section, look through it, understand it, um, and, and it will help you leaps and bounds for the exam. Uh, there's going to be a problem like this that's going to pop up, so make sure you look through that material. All right, and so the first step to this is understanding a relationship. So basically, we're wanting to solve for the volume given this graph. Well, how in the world do we proceed with that? We'll understand that, vol or, uh, understand that flow rate is going to be equal to some sort of volume over time. Okay, And if you're kind of stuck on that, let's think about this, cubic feet per second. Okay. So that's where that comes from, cubic feet per second. It's some sort of volume over time, all right? And so what we can do is we can manipulate this equation to solve for volume. So volume is going to be equal to your flow rate times your time, okay? So now you can see kind of where we're headed now. Um, what we need to do is we need to almost create this sort of area under the curve and so I'm going to basically make rectangles. I'm going to keep it simple and make rectangles out of this. And so remember, zero is our datum. So anything below zero, we're just going to ignore. Terrible line, but you get the point. Anything below zero, we're going to ignore. So uh, starting with one, it looks like at time one, whatever it is, seconds, hours, minutes, uh, it's zero. And then we're going to, I'm going to go in unit to one. That's going to be easiest for me. It looks like this line right here is uh, pretty close to the center and so what we want to do here's a tip for you a fun tip uh, you need to make sure that the line in the graph intersects just about the midpoint of your rectangle and so you'll notice that we have a little bit of extra here well that accounts for a little bit right here okay so it kind of balances out it almost creates a sort of average uh, average end if you will and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going here so from two to three uh, let's go up to just about the midpoint. It looks like it's going to be just about right there at two. And remember, this is almost like a little guessing game. Well, not a guessing game, but an approximation game. You're going to get it close, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So keep going here, and then from four to five, keep going up. I'm just going to bring this up to the top. We'll have a little bit of left over here, but that won't account for much. So. Uh, from five to six, same ordeal. Let's go to just about the midpoint. I think it's about right there. That's close. Call it two. Um, and then let's see from six to seven. Remember this is, uh, about a half right there. So, um, this is zero. So this is kind of where it touches zero. I'm going to erase my lines earlier, my little mess that I made. Uh, this is where we head back to zero. So we can stop our calculations there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create areas with these rectangles. So rectangle one, this one's going to have an area. It's got a height of 0 0.5. I'm going to use that 0 0.5. That's our flow rate. Remember, uh, we need to multiply that by the change in time. So from time two to time one, that is our width of our rectangle. It's this guy right here. All right. So we need to make sure that we subtract those two. You can really do this from three to one or five or four to one or however you want to do this. I typically like to stick with just units. I understand on the actual exam, you're not going to be able to draw on this. Uh, you're not going to be able to draw on the computer, at least to my knowledge, you're not. 
but you can get your finger up there. You can kind of guess, okay, let's see, 1 to 2, just about the midpoints, 0.5. So from 1 to 2, 0.5, multiply those two. Uh, from 3 to 2, let's see, pretty close to 2 is going to be the midpoint there. So you can kind of use your finger, use your uh, engineering brain there and just kind of figure it out. I'm just drawing this for illustrative purposes. All right, and then for rectangle two, I'm gonna go ahead and write this one down and then I'm gonna to skip towards the end uh, and you kind of check your work. So this is pretty close to two, 2.0. We're gonna multiply this by the difference between three and two. So you can kind of see that um, I'm going in units of one, one time. So that gives us a more accurate um, calculation. But again, this is just approximate. You're, you're gonna get it close enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip towards the end and I'll see you then. All right, is that about what you got? Did you get pretty close? If you uh, got pretty close, you're close enough. Uh, but if you are off by a little bit, I encourage you to go back and check out your graph. Make sure that you're intercepting the top of your rectangle at just about the midpoint with that line, the line on the graph. That'll give you a better area. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these areas of our rectangle, or volume, if you will. We're going to sum these up. That's what that sigma is. We're going to add them all up. And when you do, you end up with a number that looks pretty close to 11.5, and that is going to be cubic feet. Okay. Uh, and if you're off by just a little bit, you need to get a little bit more precise with your um, areas of your rectangles. So let's go up to our answers here. 11.5 is what we ended up with, and it looks like the answer closest to this one is going to be 12. So they're not going to trip you up. They're not going to expect you unless they give you enough detail. They're not going to expect you to go to like the hundredths place. So two decimal points, um, but we are pretty close to 12 cubic feet. The next closest is like nine. Uh, yeah, nine. And then if you end up at like 10.5, 10.5 cubic feet, you're right smack in the middle between two answers, nine and 12. Um, I encourage you to go back and look at your rectangles. Make sure you have pretty good uh, re uh, rectangles. And if you need to, you can cut it down to halves. So from 1.5 to one, you can kind of split that one in half, 0.25 or whatever, you know, the line intersects. So I hope this video helps. Hope it clears some things up. We'll catch you next time.